Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract, and this is our sixth video. If you go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, scroll on down to School. The first three videos were on Lesson 1, getting display objects to show up. We talked uh, about some programming basics at that time, too, things like variables, classes, objects, that sort of thing. And then we're in Lesson 2 now. We're on the third video of Lesson 2. We started off Lesson 2 with configuration objects. We also got an image on the screen, and we made a slider control the image. And now we are wanting to come on down to where we are doing animation. So we're going to see about animation for the first time. And we will apply animation to our little project that we were working on. Right now we have a car in there, but it would be nice to animate this car in. Maybe animate the slider in as well. Does that sound good? Okay, uh, let's go to the code now. Let's see what that is. We'll drop this down. Here's the code. We were in a Zim template, of course, and that's a place where you can code on the canvas with JavaScript. If you haven't seen the earlier lessons, obviously, or earlier videos, you should go check out those. Okay, so we want to animate the car. Come up and we find the car. Here it is. The animation can be done with the dot animate property. I mean, animation can actually be done manually. So if we were to look at this from the beginning, there's a car. Uh, animation needs to happen in time. So we have this thing called a ticker. And we would then dot add. So we work on the ticker directly. And we're going to add the following function. We haven't really looked at functions yet, so, but we'll get there. This is just a, a function as a block of code that does something. So in here, we could animate the car. We could say it's x plus equals 1. What this does is it takes um, the current x value of the car, that's its x position, and adds 1 to it. It's the same as saying car x is equal to car dot x plus 1, like that. All right, it's a little bit sort of strange looking. It just is basically adding 1, or in this case, we could add 10 each time, and it will move 10 pixels constantly. The ticker is like, brrr, it's really, really fast. So we'll just change that to, to 1, or indeed the, we could say car plus plus, like that. Car plus plus is a short way of saying plus equals 1. Uh, but uh, if you if you do the plus equals 1, oops, you daisy missed there. If you do the plus equals 1, then it's easy to say plus equals 10 or plus equals 5 if we want to change the speed of it. Let's see what an animation of uh, plus equals 1 looks like. So we refresh here. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> the car is going backwards. How about a minus equals one? <laughs> then our car hopefully will go forward. So we refresh here, and there the car goes forward. Hello. <laughs> Wait a second, car. Goodbye, car. <laughs> All right. So that's how easy animation is. We'll comment out that. Yeah, semicolon at the end of that. We'll comment out that. But uh, there are equations that kind of come along with that. Rather, that was a linear animation. It's just like going a same speed. Many of our animations, you want easing on there to make it look better. You want it to start off a bit slow, then faster, and then slow down. And it looks more organic and uh, cool and natural and fluid. Uh, you can also do fun easing effects like bounce and elastic. Uh, those types of things. All right, so there is an easier way to animate a car, uh, and we can use animate. So we'll tuck, we'll center rigid, we'll drop down and say dot animate like that. Uh, note that we put the semicolon there on the end, so you, you can't do that because that would mess up our chaining. Remember that? So we're, we dot animate. Now, if we want to animate we could let's see what it looks like when we animate the alpha so that the car fades in. So if we want to animate the alpha, we can to to um, well first of all we'd want it starting at zero dot alp of zero. This is one way to do it. There's a couple ways, but if we, if we can't see it, then we want to animate the alpha into one. Uh, we don't know what that really means. Uh, Zim won't know. Hey, that's the alpha. 
So if you want to say that this is the alpha, you can go like so. Uh, well, almost <laughs> there. But that's the wrong format, and so is this. This is the wrong format. You don't assign one to an alpha in there. The alpha of what? We, we don't know. Uh, this is almost the right format, but do you remember what else we would need? That's right, the squiggly brackets there. Now this is uh, a data construct that makes sense to JavaScript. This is saying I'm an object and I have a property, an alpha property of one. And this is a good way to specify what properties we want to animate because if we wanted to animate another property, then we could, we could add it in here. Scale colon two. See what I mean? We can animate any number of properties that we want all at once if we have this this format and indeed we do the next parameter so this was the prop the props parameter the next parameter is uh, how long do you want to take to, to animate so we could animate it in 2000 milliseconds and let's see we're gonna get a really slow animation fade in here we go let's check it out refresh no car Ooh, fades in Yes. Okay, so that's a fade-in. Now, does a fade-in make sense for a car? How often does your car fade in? <laughs> uh, maybe it comes out of the mist. <laughs> so, not often. Only when it's misty. Uh, what does a car do? Well, a car might move. It might change position. So, uh, why don't we do like what we were doing here with the X? So, instead, we'll animate the X. Now, animate the X to where? Currently, the car has its registration point in the center, and that also centers it on, on the stage. So actually, this is where it would be. Stage width divided by 2. That's in the center. I don't know if we're going to do the alpha again. We'll leave that out. Uh, this is where the car currently is. And then we have to say, where did the car start from? So it's sort of like a two-step process. We have to figure out where it is when actually, you know, couldn't couldn't we just animate it from somewhere and then animate it to where it already is? <laughs> and indeed, Zim has a way to do that. Uh, but it's a parameter called the from parameter further on. And that would be handy. Why don't we do that? Let's um, let's set that up. We, we could specify where to start. So we could sit here and go dot locate the car at hmm, minus 500 or something like that. And then animate the X into this location in something like 1000 milliseconds. Shall we just try this and show you that it works? We refresh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, doot, 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 <laughs> oopsies. So in other words, stage height, blah, blah, blah. So uh, anyway, let's not do it that route. Let's go and find the from parameter. Now the from parameter is sort of dot null, comma, dot null, comma. We have to go past the type of easing, past any callback functions, past a weight. You know, I don't know. There's a, any number of thing, more parameters in there that you would find out in the docs. So instead of doing that, we will turn to the Zim Duo technique of a configuration object. Now it's a little tricky here, because we already have an object in, and we're going to be having now an object within an object. So that's okay. That's great. You have to get used to that. So we're going to select all of that that we already have, put it inside of the squiggly brackets, and drop it down, like so, onto their own lines. But does that look right? Is this the format of an object? No, because all we have are the values. We don't have the property name. So inside this object, this is the right format because we have a property name, colon, and a value. Here inside of this object, we only have values. So uh, what we have to do is each parameter name becomes a, val or becomes a property name. So that is props, <laughs> coincidentally. The next one is time. That makes it a little bit easier to see. Good. Now we're fine. Now we've got a proper configuration object with props and time properties. And the value, in this case, happens to be yet another object. That happens quite a lot. We're, we often nest objects within objects, and brackets within brackets. And, and there you go. All those are called levels of abstraction. They're like boxes and 
I am Dr. Abstract. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I even have a philosophy called nodism. It's all about hierarchy. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. Um, the more you work with them, the easier coding becomes. And indeed, the easier life becomes. Keep putting things in compartments. Oh, yes. <laughs> Compartmentalizing makes life easy. Okay, like uh, socks in your drawers and that kind of stuff. All right, props. Uh, so this will uh, this will allow us to uh, get to the from parameter more easily. From cold <laughs> true, unless you spell it with an e on the end, that won't work. So what this is saying is animate it from uh, this location. So we don't need to put in there. We're now animating it from minus 500. So this is the same as what we had before. It's going to go in reverse. And we'll adjust that in just a second. This is saying animate from an X of minus 500 to where it already is, to where it's been center regged. So isn't that handy? And we refresh here. And now we'll see that the car comes in from the back. But we want the car to come in from, from over here. It might be kind of cool. Do you see the shape of the car? shape of the car is sort of like isometric or whatever. It's like half facing us. So the front of it is. It's on an angle. So what if we animate it right from here? So the center reg. We'll take the center reg and put it right at the edge of the stage and we'll increase its scale and its position. So we're going to increase the scale so it gets bigger. So it's small here, gets bigger, and then arrives right where it is. Sound good? Comma, scale. Uh, we have to say from. We could animate it from zero or maybe like point, I don't know, point three perhaps. So not quite, you know, as small as can be, like uh, no, like way off in the distance. And in that case too, we'd probably want to bring in the alpha as well uh, to an, from an alpha of zero. So we'll start, this means start off at zero, start off at this size, start off, oh, at this stage width like that. So here's our starting positions. We animate from that to where it already is. So we don't even need this alpha in there. Okay, let's try her out and see if that car is animating in. Hmm. It's a little slow. It's a little far off too. I think uh, we can bring that in uh, stage width minus 100 or something and increase the speed of that to like 600. And we refresh here. Shoop. Shoop. Maybe even faster and even just over a little bit more. 500. I don't know. 200 might be too much. Yeah. 150. Ah, the life of animating, huh? And you could even go to the 50 milliseconds here and go, uh, you know, 450 or 550 if you want. Okay. So, great. We've got an animation. Do we like it? Boom. Nice. Hey there, Dr. Abstract. Uh, there's types of easing as well. Easing is cool. Here is, I don't know if this makes sense with the car, but we could uh, back out. So what back out means is on the end of the animation, in is at the beginning, out is at the end. We're going to like go for, go past it and come back. Let's see if uh, see what that looks like. Sometimes you have to make the time go a bit bigger. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, 600. Let's just check that out. A car probably wouldn't do that. Do you see how it's going back? There's also elastic and bounce like it could make. <laughs> I want to see a bounce on a car. <laughs> Let's go to a second and choose bounce out. <laughs> that was like the worst one. It's like I just hit something. <laughs> bounce out. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, but it's doing it the alpha too. So the alpha is like uh, flashing its its alpha there. Anyway, <laughs> if the car goes, <laughs> all right. So we won't do that. We won't actually do any ease. But it's possible that a, a back out could be fine. And you've also got back in out and stuff like that. But uh, with the alpha, we won't see that uh, as well. So we'll leave that easing there. Okay, so the car is in. Great. 
Now, uh, we shouldn't an we should animate the slider. What do we how do we want to animate that slider? Let's have a look. Uh, we could fade it in. It's probably fine. We don't want this animating in via motion and then this one also animating in via motion. I don't think maybe like this one comes this way, that one goes that way, maybe. These could almost be little wheels if we animated in and also spun the button. You know what? That would that would look kind of cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> okay, so um, we animate the slider this way and we'll also animate the button so that the little button spins as we um, as we we come on in. Oh, oh yeah. All right, so you see what we just did there is relevance where we don't, we're not just making it up. It's like w what would be cool about it? Like what would what would work? What would fit? Uh, give it a little bit of thought, like we did with the car. We don't just fade it in, we, we moved it in. It makes more sense. And if we're going to move this slider in, hey, that thing's round, maybe it would animate in like a wheel. Perhaps we could even put... Oh, no, it's going too far to put two in there. <laughs> All right, so there's the button. Let's animate the, uh, the rotation of the button. So uh, we could do that with the front two, dot animate. And in around brackets, we want we want to get to the from. So you see immediately this time, and maybe it's a bit easier. I'm just going to start off with the squiggly brackets, and then I hit enter. So we're animating the button. It already has a rotation of 90. Great, but uh, we will animate it. So the props here, oh, not the pros. The props rotation is another property that we can animate. And what do we think we need? 360. Now, if we're already at 90, we animate to 360. It's going to go from 90 to 360. So there's another thing we can do, and that's a relative animation. So if you put in quotes, it will animate a relative animation. This is clockwise. Uh, but if we put times 2, well, darn, we can't do a times 2 with quotes. Well, we could, but it's not. 7, uh, what is this, 720? Like that. So we'll animate it 720 degrees. So this is twice. What else uh, do we want to say about that? And that will be in a time of, well, uh, I don't know, probably 700 or something like that. Time colon 700. And anything else? This should be a linear ease. Usually, oh no, I suppose. Uh, we'll, we're good. We'll just leave it with the, the current ease. So I guess that's... Oh, and, and a from. Comma. From. Colon. True. Or does it matter? The... No, I, I guess it won't matter. Because it's, it's relative anyway. Alright, great. Let's see it work. We refresh here. Nice. So you see that thing um, spinning away? But, and is that going the right way? Okay, but we're going to come in from the left-hand side. Ah, we also want to wait on this, though. We want to wait. How long did it take us to animate the car in? Did we leave that at a time of 1,000? I thought we increased that to... Uh, this is the stage. I thought we increased that in speed, didn't we? Let's try this again. 600, just make sure. Something broken. Something broken, broken. Something went broken. What was it? 600, not there, maybe. Is it down here? Wait, uh, right. Uh, we didn't put anything in for the wait. Okay, comment that out for now. <laughs> we'll wait before we put in something for the wait. Yeah, sure, that's fine. So we're animating that one for 600. We'll want to wait at least that, but maybe just a little bit less, 500. Uh, when we don't have all that many animations, uh, maybe it's fine just to finish it. But when we have a lot of animations, you want to sort of st not stagger. Uh, is it stagger you want to call it? Not one after the other, but sort of have one start and then partway through it start the other, and then partway through that one start the other, etc. So we're going to wait 500 on that, and let's see what we get. We refresh, and then that. But this whole thing is going to be moving in from the left-hand side. So we're going to animate in the whole button, uh, or not the whole button, the whole slider. 
So here's the slider. Here's our chaining of position. There's our change. So let's drop this down. I'm now dropping the chaining down. Note that I'm paying attention to all my indenting there. Uh, since I've now indented the pose and indented the change, this stuff all gets indented in there. So don't leave it over here. Don't leave it over there. Indent it as well so that we can see this indent indentation. And then in here somewhere we'll dot animate dot animate. Uh, we want to just animate in the X, but we have to get to a weight. So that probably means we want the the configuration object, the props. Are you getting good at this? Uh, the X position. Uh, we want to start from off the stage, so minus 200 or something like that, comma. And we will say in a time of, what did we say in the other one, 600, 700, 600? We probably want to match this time right here, 700. Speaking of time, how are we doing for time? Okay, 20, 20 minutes gone by, 10 minutes left. All right, so the time of 700 and what else? From, colon true. So we're going to animate from minus 200 to its current location. And that looks pretty good. Do not put a semicolon there. Why? You, you know, you see it, you go, oh, I want to finish that. No, because we're dotting the change on after. So we save that and we refresh. No, we forgot the weight or something. Yeah, we didn't even put a weight in here. So weight colon 600, comma, or was it 500? All righty, let's try it right now. The refresh. <laughs> you see, the problem with that is we didn't move it off stage quite enough, did we? I almost can't even see that uh, animating, and maybe this was all for naught. Uh, we'll go minus 400, like that, and refresh here. Well, if your eyes are fast enough to catch that, <laughs> then you're doing all right. I suppose we could slowly animate this in. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> okay, so we'll put a time of 1,700 on each of these and then see this slider slowly animate its way in. <laughs> nice, I kind of like it. I think a back would be good there, don't you think? I think it should animate in and then go back a little bit, and probably that'll work out fine. So in both cases, uh, here's one. So we're at the weight there. We're at the weight. Oh, this weight doesn't have a comma. Okay, there's the comma. We're at the weight there. We're at the weight here. We hit enter, and we go ease, colon, quote, what was it, back out. We can't even see the, the back in. And we got froms. Do we have a from on this one? We didn't do a from on this one. Uh, I don't think that's going to matter. Like I said, that's a relative animation. So not bad. What's wrong? What's wrong with that? It kind of oh, looks all right to me. Huh? Yeah, look at that. Look how real that is. It's like this little ball operating on here. We just animated in a slider. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that looks all right. Perhaps a touch slower than that. I uh, will put uh, 400. Animation usually is not really supposed to be seen. You're not supposed to sit there going, oh, I'm watching animation. It's just almost like a feeling. That's why uh, people, when they first animate, they animate too slowly. Every Everything, oh, look, I made animation. They really want to see it. No, it should almost be not seen. It's just like felt. It's like whoosh, get over with. Especially if you're animating in a lot of interface, you don't want to sit there waiting. In this case, uh, you know, we're not really sitting there waiting. There's not too much that came in, and, and that was actually quite quite amusing. <laughs> there you go. Fine. You can, you can play with that uh, as needed. Now, Imagine that you're carrying on and you're going to do something. You're going to add some dials here and you, you, you want to, we did a really neat application actually with this uh, Dr. Abstract guy in a car. Uh, we didn't animate in anything, I don't think, or maybe we did, but I, I like this uh, version better. Uh, we played with some dials to change the sounds between real car sounds to Jaguar, different Jaguar car sounds. 
and two different jaguar animal sounds going rawr, rawr. and it was like baby you can tune my car <laughs> was was the name of it and that's fascinating it's up on code pen you can see the example there i really like that app um what was going to say but as we continue building that it's a pain in the neck when we go to test we're, we're testing we have to wait for this every single time and we animate something else and we got to wait for that so are you ready do you want to see some magic Okay, we, we come up top here before any of our animations. And we say animate is equal to false. So by default, the animation's turned on. But if you say animate, that's a big constant animate, animate equals false, then Zim will know not to run any animations until animate is turned back onto true. So this is used for editing purposes. It's not really a final product for the end user to see. This is for you, the developer, creator. As you're creating, you can say animate false. And because everything is animating from somewhere and going to its current location, if we remove the animation, everything's at the current location. Everything's at like its final resting point. So let's, uh, let's try it. We refresh. There it is. <laughs> Neat, huh? Everything's working just uh, as we want. So we can avoid all of those animations by setting animate to false and using um, from true. So it won't work if you don't have from colon true. You'll find that everything's stuck at the beginning of the animation, which usually isn't its final resting point. All right, so uh, that's pretty cool. What else? Uh, we've done a, a variety of different animations there. However, there is so much more to animate. I think that it would be worth it. Most people really like animation. It, it's sort of fun. It's like, ooh, you're breathing life into things like this. And because of that, I think we could probably do one more video on the other features of animation. For instance, in Zim, if you go to animate, or perhaps it's probably under examples here or something like that. But anyway, if you just add on animation like that, here's a variety of different uh, things that we can do, sequences and We've looked at weight, we looked at from, there's a series. We saw relative animation and absolute animation. If you press on any of these, by the way, it shows you little snippets of code there on how, how that's working. So um, this is zimjs.com slash animation. However, there's also, and I don't know if, eh, I suppose we could show you, there's other ones as well. If we go into examples, this is a shape animation. So you're animating from one shape to another. And here are a bunch of animations along a path in Zim Neo in Zim 9. We added all sorts of animations along paths. Isn't that cool? So well, those are wiggles on paths. Should probably show you wiggle too. It's a type of animation. And then here's an animation along a path, for instance. Whee! And the cool thing is you can change the path and then it will uh, animate along that path as well. Whee! Look at that. Okay, so those are other animations that we might look at in a, the next version of Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. And I don't know if you've noticed anything, but doing this kind of stuff right now is much more fun than learning how to make some HTML forms or, you know, style some things with CSS, which is really just working with tags and, and not necessarily even programming. But <laughs> so uh, hopefully you like this. Let your friends know. And if, you, if you're, you know, coming from part of, say, 100 days of code or something like that, let, let share it. Put, put that uh, hashtag on there and get this shared out here. Get more people coming in to learn JavaScript. Uh, with this fellow right here. All right. And what he's doing, that Dr. Abstract guy, is dancing in a light show. 
that was made with code. So hopefully by the end of this, you're coming close to doing some creative coding, making your own light shows, projecting them on bands, and it dances. Right on. Have a great night or day. Uh, cheers. Come on in to Zim at zimjs.com slash slack and hang out with us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, just ask them there. Once again, give us some thumbs up and uh, share the vid. We'll see you later. Bye.